Hey everybody, Norm from Tested here at Comic-Con 2018. Now Steve Nyson with EFX Collectibles, you at New York Comic-Con showed me the ATST walker you've been prototyping for Brian and EFX, and I love that, that chicken walker. What you have here is that, but it's, it looks a little different. It's Tell little me what's different. up with it. What's yeah, going on? We decided, uh, we talked about going back to the original, you know, the original trilogy and what a, a, a customer or someone who collects stuff like we do, we like to look at a piece and take us back to what we remember. And we always remembered it in indoor with ferns and, you know, the forest floor. So I reached out to Brian Ono, the owner, and said, hey, let's do a more dramatic pose, but put it in the location it was for the, uh, for the film. So what we came up with is I screenshot a few walking poses. You know, there's a lot of animations out there mm -hmm. to actually show it. So uh, working with Mike Salzo out on the East Coast, he uh, reposed this in a actual capture from one of the walking uh, segments. It's distinct. It's it kind of looks like it's gonna fall over anytime it walks because that top part is almost gimbaled and the bottom kind of does absolutely. the chicken walk. Yeah, absolutely. If you actually watch the ATST walk, the head stays like you said, still, and the body rotates back and forth as it's walking. Um, and if you ever see the behind the scenes stuff, when they're doing the go motion on this, mm -hmm. they're on sticks. And so the legs are always V'd in. So when it when it's walking, it's pushing that hip up and down. Ah. So it's really dramatic. And so with this version, we got a little bit of that, but this in the end is gonna be die cast. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about increasing the uh, the actual tilt and the, wow. the the leg up in the air kind of thing. And uh, they're gonna have, the base is gonna be an option. Got you it. can have a standard like black acrylic base or you can do the option for the indoor base. I love that because your prototype is in your model making, it's armature, you can, you can pose it. You can look at it, prototype it, change the pose and now you've decided on something a little more dynamic. Absolutely, and the thing, the end product will be frozen in its position, unfortunately. I, I tried to convince them to do it all piece by piece <laughs> so you could go in and play with it. And yeah. They said no, it would cost way too much money. Oh God, so much. I can't even imagine all that tooling for the armature. Um, and then you have obviously uh, tied the base and the, the um, maquette together with some flocking. And, and so will that finished model yes. have that as well? Now, what we're gonna do is the model itself will still have the uh, the grass and the dirt on the, even if it is the black base. So yeah. it'll, it'd be like you took it off of the, mm. you know, right off of the ILM, you know, and uh, the archive. Yes. But then if you want the option, uh, I had an Ewok in here hidden. For scale. Little, I had a little wicket for scale, but somebody must have wanted it more than I did. Oh. So it, uh, the, one of the great things about this, we have uh, access to molds from an original. Mm -hmm. And so instead of using scratch built stuff, we're actually gonna use those castings that were Brian obtained and redevelop those into the, the finished piece. So um, the castings, uh, kind of a neat note, are basically clad onto a metal armature, what mm. they used in filming. So we have to recreate all that internal structure to so those parts would fit on. But well, if they, you wanna get that surface detail, that accuracy, yeah. You gotta work with what you got, and, and that means going back to the original. Yeah, so this is a, I think this is a really neat, a neat display, and especially for the ATST lovers out there, it's it's true to the, the film and w what's at the archive right now. Well, in terms of things that you have on display, you know, there's the chicken walker, you have your Y-Wing, which we've seen before, and the Falcon, which is now on sale, but there's also something here that's a little bigger than that. And right. and can we take a look at the yeah, Star sure. Destroyer? Let's go take a look. Let's go take a look. Steve, this is massive. Wow, tell me about the Star Destroyer. This is the A New Hope uh, Star Destroyer. It, uh, you know, it's the, what you saw at the beginning of Star Wars. And uh, I, I had an opportunity to do another, I built two of these already that are in uh, a large uh, park on display. And uh, Brian asked me, he says, you think we could bring this thing into production? Do you think uh, there would be one, a desire yeah. for the Devastator, that's the name of the Star Destroyer, and what price point? So what we've done is we tried to create this in a way that it can be replicated quickly. Mm -hmm. And I say quickly as a, per a shop or a, uh, a small business, you could do it in about four to five weeks per model. So you're looking at limited numbers with a price point of anywhere near ten thousand dollars, made to be, order. It's a made to order, and they're they're working on the the details of that right now. 
Wow, I mean, I look at the surface detail and it's not flat. Not only do you have the channels for the relief here, and there are different densities of those. Some are deeper channels, lighter, and just small little panels that go on top of that. Just right. for surface detail. Well, you gotta understand, when, when they made this model for a shooting for A New Hope, they only finished the port side. Mm. This side was bare mm -hmm. because it would never be seen. Yeah. So they just finished this side. The underneath is where all the detail is. It's, yeah. it's all the little thousands and thousands of little chips. And what we did, we took the reference that we had. I had access to the archive for a while and we systematically went through and replicated every scribe line, every chip that was on it. And those areas that were empty, like here and over on this side, they did a redress for Empire Strikes Back. So now you're gonna find parts that are from the Empire Strikes Back era on this right. side, the Leopold, the Morza Carls. I know the one that uh, a lot of people use and they talk about, I even think Adam did a The Universal about, Greebly. Hey, the Universal Greeblies are yes. found on this side. Yes. But there were also flat panels that had no scribe lines. Mm. So what I did, I reached out to a, a magician of a model maker, Steve Gawley, an original ILM model maker who made, helped make this back in 76. And he took those blank areas and rescribed all the blanks. So he sent me back the finished pieces and on the bottom it said, finally finished, oh. you know, 40 years later or whatever the, the, the timeline it was. It was it's not just amazing. symmetrical, I can tell. Yeah, there's more detail, maybe newer inspiration, but wow, from every angle from the back as well. And we're gonna show you shots of underneath, but that really is, that, the cavity where the Tanner 4 goes in, lit up it's beautiful and they're talking about we're going to have a mirrored base it's going to be a shorter stock mm -hmm. so you'll be able to see the detail without having to climb underneath it but if you're like me i'm getting on the floor and i'm under there looking i might even have a little blockade runner you know trying to get away from this bad boy you know oh any any uh, chance you'll take on a superstar destroyer with all that you, detail? You know, the Super Star Destroyer is one that is uh, one of my favorites, but the one is the eight-foot Avenger. Mm. That's the one I've kind of been, I've been collecting information parts. We're about 90% ID'd on that eight-foot Empire Strikes Back Star Destroyer. And uh, maybe one day I'll be able to tackle it and, you know, put it on display. Oh, my God. Well, this is But right now we got four feet. Four feet of goodness right here, you know? It's amazing. It's more than just goodness. It's greatness, Steve. A lot, of, a lot of guys ask, well, where are all the lights? Yeah, yeah. Well, in, a, in the A New Hope Devastator, there's only two places where there's lights. There's a few lights in the cargo bay, which you show on the video, and there's only three lights in the back, the main engine lights, but they were halogen back then. Mm. So what I had to do, there's no LED, LED halogen bulbs to make it look like the old incandescent, mm -hmm. you know, halogen. So I buy them, I cut the ends off, and I insert the super high bright LEDs inside, use a little hot glue. And so if you ever want to replicate that old bulb look, you just be very careful on your, uh, with a, a little saw or a little grinder, take that end off, carefully break out the filament, wear eye protection and gloves so you don't cut yourself. And you can replicate that look of the old new. And those, those LEDs will burn hundreds right. and hundreds of yes. hours, super yes. bright. So You're going I'm, those extra lengths because this was made 35 years ago. Yeah, well, I'm glad you like it, and I hope folks like it. And, that, and if uh, EFX can work to get it to the public to where it's a special order item, so folks aren't waiting, that they order, the model gets built and delivered one-on-one, -on -one, which I think is a great opportunity for a collector that you know if you buy a prop, your prop is being built for you. Wow. It's not mass-produced. It's a one-off kind of thing for you. And I think that would... Uh, it would help the uh, confidence in the buyer knowing that uh, uh, they're gonna get a piece like this that's custom made for them. Oh, and it's a pleasure to see it at Comic-Con. Thank you so much, Steve. Thanks, buddy. It's great to see you again. Thanks for watching this video. If you were watching it and thinking, boy, I wish Tested sold a t-shirt, your prayers are answered. I am wearing the first Tested t-shirt that proudly proclaims that one day builds always take longer than a day. Buy yours right now in the link below.